everyone. It is good morning. It's so nice to see you. Uh, I love the song that Sister Natasha was playing about God's marvelous grace. Can't we all testify that it's because of God's grace that we have made it to see this beautiful Sabbath morning? I bring you greetings from Tacoma Park, Maryland, and it's so wonderful to uh, see all of you. Welcome, Sister Donette, Brother Isaac, Sister Marie, Pear, Olive, Stiffiwe, Sister Veronica, and our presenter, uh, Dr. Aitken. So uh, I want to welcome you. I'm Kiva Dennis, and welcome to our medical mission, Missionary Sabbath Hour. At this time, we will open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again for your marvelous grace. Thank you, God, for the new mercies that are available to us on this morning, on this day. And we just bless your name, Father, and just, you know, we want to express our gratitude and our gratefulness to you uh, for preserving us, for keeping us, and for allowing us to see this uh, Sabbath day where we can be recreated in you. Lord, I pray a special blessing on our time together this um, today on this platform. And I pray that your spirit will be with each of us in our respective locations, Father. I pray that our hearts will be open to your spirit and that um, we will receive a special blessing um, today. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderful. And now I will turn it over to Sister Natasha. Amen. Thank you, Kiva, for uh, opening us today. Um, <clears throat> happy Sabbath, everyone. I'd like to introduce our speaker today, Sister Camille Aiken. Um, she is joining us uh, from the state of Georgia. And Sister Camille is a registered dental hygienist, a registered nurse, and a gospel medical missionary. She has presented on various platforms, <clears throat> excuse me, because of her passion to do all she can to promote health for, God pe for God's people with the talent he has granted her. Um, she has many years of experience in nursing and dentistry. She as a wife and homeschools her son and came to learn about medical missionary work when she herself many years ago had to go to a lifestyle center to address an illness she was dealing with. And this sparked her love for medical missionary work. So we're so happy to have Sister Camille here to present to us on dental health. Um, so Sister Camille, welcome to this platform and you may begin. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much <clears throat> for giving me this opportunity to talk with you all about dental health from a spiritual perspective. Can you see my screen okay? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect, perfect, that's good. Um, I wanted to thank Natasha. I've met her <clears throat> a couple of years ago in Maryland when I came up there to do a training with, with her and it's been good, so thank you very much for everybody who has allowed me to come on to talk with you about dental health. Yes, I'm a dental hygienist and a nurse. Um, I actually started out in um, as a dental assistant in the, in the United States Air Force. So I was in the military for quite some time. And then I went on to become a hygienist. I was doing my time in the Air Force. I was actually trained in dental forensics, administering dental anesthesia, as well as managing um, the, the preventive dentistry department in the Air Force um, clinics. And as a matter of fact, these were the, um, I was on the basis of Aviano Air Force Base Italy and Anderson Air Force Base in Guam. And then I served as an interim manager for the dental clinic. Now I'm not telling you this just to um, draw any attention to myself because that is not the purpose, but I want you to understand how God has moved me from one healthcare profession to another because of my the passion that he has put in my heart to take care of the body. 
I later went on into um, the Indian Health Service in Washington, where I took care of pretty much all the children, and I was there as their um, infection control officer for the dental clinic. And this simply emphasized the importance of taking care of our body and how we are actually treated. So I actually get to see a lot of things from a different perspective than the average person because I had to write the protocols and the, I guess you could say the regulations for infection control in dentistry. And that is very important that you want um, proper management of how people treat you. So <clears throat> my approach is more gonna be from a preventive dentistry point of view. I am not a dentist, I am a dental hygienist. And my focus is more on prevention. I will address some things that um, involve dental diseases and just share some of, some of the things that I have learned over the years as I practice as a dental hygienist. And so, let me make sure that this, this presentation, presentation is for educational information only and not for diagnosing nor prescribing any treatment. Therefore, if you have any concerns at all that goes beyond my scope of preventive education, then please make sure that you consult with a dental therapist or dentist. Now, if at any time anybody feels like they need to reach out to me and ask me something, I will welcome that. Natasha has my, my information and that is okay. You can get that from her. Okay, so... I do want to share this before I go into anything. This teaching or this presentation will be from these three perspectives, okay? I'm gonna be using the Bible. You will be able to see the Bible and how, and God's words and, and his love for us as I go through based on just a simple way that he has created us from an anatomy and physiology perspective. I'm gonna be using the spirit of prophecy and good science so you can see why God's word, God's inspired word and the information that he has given to his prophets is for is, is now revealed in the science that we're learning in recent years. And so we can trust his word and the spirit of prophecy. Another thing I wanna go through is that is to help us to understand that sickness and disease are caused or are the result of one of these three reasons. For example, <clears throat> it is for the glory of God. And you can see that in John chapter 11, verse four, where the Bible says, when Jesus heard that, now this is in reference to, to Lazarus, okay? When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of Man may be may be glorified thereby. This is one of the reasons why a person can get ill. They can get ill because it's for his glory. Okay? Disease can also come about because there is a violation of natural laws. Okay? Um, for instance, we know that acid is very bad for the teeth. Like, for instance, if you're sucking on a, a lemon, that can be very dangerous for the teeth in our mouth. And so in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 26, we read this text as vinegar is to the teeth and smoke is smoke to the eye, so is the slugger to them that sent him. Vinegar is extremely acidic and extremely bad for the teeth, as well as other parts of the body, especially the brain. Um, when I was living in Palau, they have this thing called betel nut, which makes the teeth very black. You will see a picture of that later on. Mm -hmm. But what they do, they actually... Am I okay? Is it good? Is, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, you stopped for a moment. Yes, because I hear um, talking. I don't know if there was something else going on. <clears throat> I just ask that everyone can please put themselves on mute. So okay. they would use this um, to get the substance that they're looking for, which kind of gives them a little bit of a high, they would use lemon powder and their teeth will be 
very, very black. But you'll see why um, vinegar or acid on the teeth is, is not good later on. So um, not taking care of the mouth, of our mouth as far as cleanliness is, can eventually lead to some type of oral and or systemic disease. The last, um, the third um, reason why sickness and disease can be, it can be a result of a violation of spiritual law. The two best example of this in the Bible can be found in Numbers chapter 12 verses one to 10. This is when um, Miriam became a leper because of her blatant disregard to the order of leadership God had established as having Moses being the one to lead the children of Israel. And so, you know, even, even if we, if we think that gossiping or talking negatively about people is okay, it is not okay. It can actually make you become physically sick, not because God is some arbitrary God who says, okay, I'm going to strike you because you do something wrong, but simply because there is order and there's a way that we, um, we should represent him. And when we start to feed on negativity or anything that is not positive, we are actually physiologically causing bad chemicals to spread throughout our body that can essentially make us sick. So it's not, I don't want you to think or walk away thinking that God, that I'm trying to share that God is, is a God that is vengeful because he is not. But he knows that the way that we think actually affects our physical being. Okay. Um, and we see that more in the laws of health. The other one is found in Exodus 20, verse 12, and this relates, and it, it is reiterated in Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. And Exodus 20, verse 12 says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And Colossians 3, verse 20 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Sickness can be a result of disobeying your parents. Now, if there's any children on here, then this is more towards them and for us parents to really, really help our children to understand that obedience is a way that we show our love to God. And so we, as we stand in the presence of God being his representative to the little ones or the younger ones, then we want them to understand, look, it is a promise of long life. Now, I must say that most of the disease that I will be discussing this this morning will fall into actually number two, where it is a violation of the laws of health, whether it's from neglect, willful or, or not willful, or from ignorance. Disease will be the result because the natural law is broken. Now, I would like to reassure you that when healing and restoration takes place at any from any degree, it will be to the glory of God. Amen. And so um, I just want to take a few minutes to review what disease is so that it will be easier for you to understand as I go through with this. Now, um, the cause, okay, the curse causeless shall not um, shall not come. This is in Proverbs chapter 26 and verse two. Now, when you think of disease, we should understand that it comes about because of something else, okay? It's actually a good thing to let you know, hey, there's something that's going on, that that is going on that is not good. So this means that there is a reason for why something happened. For, ex for example, if you are not diligent with keeping your mouth clean or healthy, then you can expect that something unfavorable will happen. Therefore, it is vitally important to, to know and understand that diseases never comes without a cause. Um, and that found that that something is actually found in the definition of, of disease. But before I go to the definition of disease, I would like to pause just for a really short moment and emphasize something very important when dealing with disease and being a medical missionary. Now, being a medical missionary is a work that we all should take hold of in some way or form. We don't all have the same talents, but we are told that every single one of us should take a part in this work of medical missionary. Just 
pausing because I'm hearing some kind of an echo. Oh, oh. Are we good? Can you hear me okay clearly? Yes, I'm muted then. Okay, so um, if we're going to do the work of God as medical missionary, um, and we don't address the mind and what faith is, then whatever we are doing for the sick one, for the one who is sick, will not be as successful unless we diligently work towards healing that person or helping that person rather to see Jesus and understand how what faith is and how it applies to their own healing. It is faith um, that will enable the person, that person, to know and believe that it is God who does the healing and not the items that they use to work towards healing. Those have a play in it, but it is faith. Now, I say this because, um, because we want to help them to know that healing is for the purpose of enabling that person, of en enabling you and me to be um, restored in the image of God. This image of God has been dangerously, horrifically marred by sin. It's also, the healing is also for the purpose um, for us to become dedicated servants to him, to God. And why? Because we want to bring souls into a saving relationship with our Savior. Now, as I was thinking about this, about what faith is, it takes faith for someone to live in a very dangerous city to have their windows open all night long. Because most people will close their windows, have their alarms on and everything. But God said we must have pure air, even in the bedrooms. And so it takes faith to trust that God will protect us as we are following what he has told us to do in order to maintain health. And so if we don't help people to understand the importance of faith in God when it comes to healing or coming to, to have a same relationship with him, then we're doing them a disservice if we're only giving them a protocol of herbs and and all these other natural remedies and things like that to to get better if we don't if we don't address the mind and how they think and help them to have faith in God who created them in his own image then it's only part of the work that we are doing so help to let us just make sure that when we're doing this that we really address them from that perspective and so what is disease then okay um this is my I all right, disease is an effort of nature to free the system of conditions that are a result of the law of a result of a violation of the laws of health. Nature meaning how the body actually functions, how it operates. It is to free the conditions of disease that are resulting from violating the laws of health. So this is from Ministry of Healing, page 127. So what are the laws of health? Well, um, the laws of health is pure air. And these are actually given in a specific order and because it is the order that God gave Ellen G. White when she actually wrote this book, Ministry of Healing. Pure air, okay? Sunlight, abstemiousness or temperance, rest, exercise, proper nutrition, the use of water, trust in divine power, cleanliness and purity of mind. These are principles that actually govern how our bodies function. And when any of them are violated, the person will have some sort of dis-ease if they do not feel it, um, even if they don't feel it right away. But the thing is that we do not want to have any disease. We want to maintain our state of health, okay? After all, our first duty towards God and our fellow beings is that of self-development. Every faculty with which the creator has endowed us should be cultivated to the highest degree of perfection that we may be able to do the greatest amount of good of which we are capable. Hence, that time spent 
to good, that time is spent to good account, which is used in the establishment and preservation of physical and mental health. So this presentation is simply to promote and motivate every one of us to preserve our physical and mental health from a dental point of view. And this, you're going to see that this is actually going to affect the whole entire body. Okay. And so when we are, um, when we are doing this, it is, it is vitally important to understand that while we are maintaining our health, we're doing it so that we can be healthy to go out and serve God. It is very hard to serve God when you are sick, but people find ways of serving God anyway. And that's a good thing. So I will begin with a few questions and some um, statistics on dental health. Okay, did you know that your mouth has anywhere from 300 to 500 different types of bacteria living in it? This is called the oral flora and they actually belong there. It is when some of them um, actually get out of control for various reasons that certain types of oral disease actually steps in. Did you know that um, not taking care of your teeth or your oral health can wreak havoc on your entire body? Most people do not know this. And so because I've been in dentistry for like almost over 20 years, it, 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 it amazes me at time, the little that people know. So doing this kind of presentation is a big deal for me. It is my goal by the end of um, this presentation that you will have a clearer understanding of how true this statement really is, okay? Did you know that you can actually prevent a lot of illnesses with proper oral hygiene and regular dental um, care? Is there a question? Okay, so you can actually prevent a lot of um, illnesses with proper dental care. Now, according to the World, the World Health Organization, oral disease affects nearly 3.5 billion people worldwide with um, untreated tooth decay ranking first among 200, 328 diseases in the Global Burden of Disease Study. That was done in 2017, and they still refer to this um, global study today. In 2019, untreated dental cavities or caries or tooth decay in the permanent teeth is the most common health condition according to the global burden of disease. Okay. Today, globally, an estimated 2 billion people suffer from cavities of the permanent teeth and 514 million children suffer from caries of primary teeth of their primary teeth this is according to the global burden of disease and this was done in 2017 i would dare to say that this number is actually a lot higher i have not found that when i was trying to update this this information but disease is one of the most preventable disease is known, yet it is so very prevalent. And I truly believe that this has to do with a lack of knowledge. Yet, um, tooth decay, like I said, is the most preventable. Um, this uh, oral disease is, I see a hand. Can you give me one second? Let me just get through this and then I will take your hand, okay? Oral diseases include, but are not limited to, um, Conditions such as dental cavities or caries or tooth decay, periodontal disease, tooth loss or edentulism, oral cancers, oral facial clefts, noma, oral dental um, trauma, and cleft lip and cleft palate. Now, one of the things that as I was doing the updating this, I never... As I was learning about dentistry, I've never heard of Noma. Now, I'm not going to tell you to go look this up because you can really find some really heavy-duty pictures, but it is a severe gangrenous disease starting in the mouth, more, and it only <clears throat> affects children. And they are pretty much between the ages of like five and eight or six and eight, somewhere around there. And if it's not treated properly, at that early stage, it actually disfigures their whole entire face. And it's only in certain um, countries 
uh, third world countries or underdeveloped countries in the world. And it is a very sad thing to even read about it. Okay. Um, so th that was one of the newest one that I've seen because we don't see it here in the States very much. Now, um, dental this is more on the risk factors for oral diseases, and this includes um, unhealthy diets, tobacco use, alcohol use, poor oral hygiene. And believe it or not, almost 100% of adults and 60 to 90% of school children in the world have or have had dental cavities. And this has to do with the, the diet, and poor oral hygiene mainly, okay? Dental cavity or cavities is, 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 is entirely preventable, yet it is the most widespread, non-commutable, and the most common disease in children. Children are the ones that actually suffers a lot. And having worked out there um, on the reservation in the, in, in, on the, um, for, for IHS, Indian Health Service, the children are the ones that suffer the most. And it's it's very, very heartbreaking to see to see that. So what am I going to be looking at is um, dental health in children. This is the order I'm going to go into. And I'm going to stop at about in a, in a couple more slides. Gen general dental health, we're going to look at the anatomy and the physiology and how the what our teeth are used for. Dental diseases and how it affects the body. <clears throat> this is the part that you really want to you really want to listen into because when you see how what happens in the mouth, how it affects the body, it is amazing. And yet it is preventable. We're going to look at nutrition and dental health tidbits and then um, oral hygiene. There's also some other things that I'm going to look at just briefly as far as restorations for, for the mouth, how to get these things restored. But before I go into this, let me just look at one quick quote, a quote from Healthful Living, page 13. This is where Ellen G. White says, a practical knowledge of the science of the human life or the human body is necessary in order to glorify God in our bodies. It is therefore of the highest importance that among the studies selected for childhood, physiology should occupy first place. We should teach our children how their bodies function, and how to take care of them, and then teach them how hygiene, cleanliness is important. Most children do not want to brush their teeth. I can tell you that, okay? And um, sometimes it feels like a daunting task to constantly do this, but if we're doing it in loving care, we understand why we are doing it, then um, we can definitely be diligent in teaching our children how to... Um, take care of their bodies. Um, I see the hand. Do they, Natasha, do you want to take this question or no? You want me to take this question? Um, <clears throat> I believe it was for a slide. If we could go to that at the end, we can come back. <clears throat> so please continue. Okay, so I'm going to stop at about halfway because I'm doing this next week again, yes? Yes, that's correct. So when I get to that slide, I'm going to stop just so that we can get some questions. Please just keep me posted on the time because I cannot see the time on my computer. Okay? All okay, right. Right now it's 9.33. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. All right, so let's just take a brief, um, just get a brief background on our teeth. Now, the Bible says, um, I will fear thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are thy works and that my soul knows right well. Now, <clears throat> this is just what a child mouth looks like. Okay. <laughs> Around, um, and, and, the, and the development of our, just our mouth alone. I'm not going to go into the rest of the body because as you know, I am a nurse as well. And so my love for the human body and the physiology is, you probably think I'm nuts, but I'm not. Around the sixth, to eighth week in utero, the teeth of a child starts to develop. By the time they are born, the teeth are close to being ready to erupt. This is why around six months, you will see like the two lower teeth coming in into their mouth. Okay, 
Now, I'm not going to go into the whole embryonic development, but in the 12th week, okay, I, I, can you see this picture on the screen? I'm going to show it to you on a different slide. 12th week in utero. Hold on a second. Give me one second, everybody. Give me one second. Let me just get this information to you. Okay, around the 12th week in utero, our adult teeth are forming so that the mother, what the mother does at that time will affect the child, her child's permanent teeth. I hope that makes sense. So there are, our adult teeth starts to form <clears throat> at 12 weeks in utero. Okay, at this time also, this is when, um, this is when the tongue is actually coming up into the mouth so that by the, the end of that 12th week, the palate is closed. If you put your tongue to the roof of your mouth, you will actually feel two lines that's going from the front to the back of your mouth. I'm not talking about the ridges on the side, but right in the center of the roof of your mouth, you actually feel two ridges. That's the palate because our body is like you have two symmetrical halves. And so when the when the palate is closing in, the tongue actually falls down into the mouth where, where it belongs. It's actually a really neat thing to do, to see and to study. So um, therefore, when you see someone with a cleft lip or cleft palate or cleft lip, you know that this happened when they were only 12 weeks old in their, mar in their mommy's uterus. Okay? And so that's when you know when that defect happen. Another thing, like I said, if you look at this picture here, I hope you can see what I'm pointing to with the teeth on the bottom under the child's, the child that's smiling. If you see that brown line, okay, that's going along the teeth, you, um, you can understand and know that there was something that was going on with the mom 12 weeks while she was pregnant. And this is actually a result of a mother taking a drug like tetracycline that actually affects the permanent teeth as they were developing during her 12th week of pregnancy. So she may have had an infection during that time. So when I look at someone and their teeth, I can tell what's going on with their mother at certain times during her pregnancy because we see these kind of things. And that's when it actually starts to develop. So um, children's health. Children should be introduced to dental care with a dentist, preferably from the time the first tooth enters their mouth. Now, this is in the United States. This is what we are teaching in the schools, okay? Now, do you have to take your child to the dentist? No, you don't. Because as you learn about the body and as you understand what's going on and how the body develops based on the, the instruction and the counsel that we should teach children, how their body functions, you know, as one of the number one educational subjects, then we will be able to introduce to them and help them understand how to keep their teeth clean when they come to that point of understanding. Now, granted, as a mom, an infant is not going to know why you're cleaning out their mouth with a wet rag after you feed them, whether it's by a bottle or by breastfeeding. But as you continue that practice, you're actually teaching them how to take care of their bodies without giving them a formal education. Babies should have their gums clean with a moist, clean rag after each feeding, whether it's breast or whether it's from the breast or from the bottle. Never, ever allow a child to fall asleep with a bottle in their mouth, especially with juice, milk, or any liquids with sugar. This is the main cause of what they call baby bottle decay. Now, it is not safe to fall asleep with any liquid going into your mouth um, while you're sleeping, period, because you could just choke. And that's not that's not even a good practice to do. But some people will do that. OK, or just having a child sucking on juice all day long. This is what causes them to have a lot of cavities. OK, always, um, always be involved with your child's dental. I Always be involved with your child's dental care and talk with them about it as you're teaching them, 
okay? Remember that dental cavities are the most prevalent diseases for children, yet it is entirely preventable. As a matter of fact, one of the, the, re, the, the sources I was looking at, it is actually the number one disease in children, and it is a disease. Okay, I already talked about this picture. Um, and remember that as we are teaching our children, we should be practicing it this as well. So let's look at some general anatomy of the teeth. Okay, this is just a picture of the anatomy of the tooth in cross section. So let's just say we cut this in half and we're looking at the tooth so we can see inside the tooth. You have um, the enamel known as the crown. Okay, it actually looks like a crown. You have the dentin, and I would um, like for you to pay very close attention to the difference in the color between the enamel and the dentin. The enamel is a lot more um, wider. No one has perfectly white teeth. That's not natural. Um, but the dentin is more yellowish in color. This is important as I go through the anatomy with you. Okay. Um, now, I have to say that the enamel, like I said, it's not white. So when you see someone with white teeth, that's not natural. It is the result of um, either laser treatment or bleaching the teeth or um, a restoration called veneers. These are caps that are placed on the front surface of the teeth to give them that quote unquote white appearance. Sometimes this can be for aesthetics, like a person with discoloration of the enamel or like the picture that we saw earlier here, okay, the discoloration of the enamel, or um, <clears throat> or um, the a disfigurement of the teeth, or what what we call pitting. Some of that can happen from um, fluoride use or excessive fluoride use that can actually cause pitting of the teeth. And then you have the gingiva, which is also known as the gums. Okay, the gingiva here this area here, which is our, our gums. Another is just a fancy name or the dental name for gums. Okay, you have the pulp, which is right up in the crown of the tooth, which then leads down to your root canals. Okay, so when they're doing um, an endodontic procedure where they're doing a root canal, what they actually do is take out all of these nerves and blood vessels and veins out of the out of your teeth and then they fill it in okay and then you have the cementum it's very important to understand this you have the cementum which is this white line right here can you see the arrow on my on the screen if you can see this and natasha can you tell me if you can see the arrow on the screen where is the arrow right now is I'm pointing on the tooth. No, I do not see it. Okay, so let me just switch over, switch over a little bit here. Let's see if I can get out of. Okay, can you see my screen now with my arrow? Yes. Okay, perfect. So here you have the the um the cementum. I mentioned earlier that you have the root canal. These are where your, the pulp and the root canal, you have the your nerves, your blood vessels, and your veins and your arteries, which are your blood vessels. This is what they actually take out of the tooth. This is the lively part of the tooth. <clears throat> and so you would have, they would take this part out and put in what they call the, the root canal filling, which is also gutta percha. I'll talk about that a little bit more. So um, okay, so here you have um, the cementum. Now the cementum is very, very, very important. Is if, if you can hear the word cement, okay? This is where you have what is called the periodontal ligament. <clears throat> Excuse me the periodontal ligaments, and that is what pretty much anchors the tooth to the bone. So the periodontal ligaments are anchored in the cementum and then it's anchored to the alveolar bone. Okay, this is the bone that surrounds the tooth. And then of course you have your nerve supply, which I just mentioned about being in the root canal. Now there's an area that is not labeled on the screen and it's very important that 
you understand this because this is where the cause of disease happens where you have dental health that now affects your physical health. Let me um change my screen here. Let me see. Hmm. So you have um you have these lines here. Where's my arrow? I can't find. Okay. So you have these lines here in the dentin. Okay. This area here where you can see my, my arrow, this is called the sulcus. This is the space between the tooth and the gums where the gums are not attached to the tooth. This is why flossing is so important because if we don't floss, calculus or tartar will build up on the teeth under the gums and that can cause a lot of damage okay we're going to get more into that but that's that's one structure that was not on the previous screen you don't even see sulcus here but that's what it is now i have this picture here that's called odontal blast odontal blast anything that says odontal anything has to do with the dent with dentistry <clears throat> the odontal blasts are actually cells Okay, there are cells that actually cause the growth of the teeth. You have odontal class that actually breaks down the bone or does something to the tooth itself that is not in a good direction. When you look at the dentin, this is the crown here. But when you look at the dentin, these lines that I asked you to pay attention to, this is what communicates the outside, what's going on outside of the teeth to the inside. So if you're drinking something very cold, these are what's called dental tubules, these lines. Very important, okay? And it's only in the dentin. These are called tubules, and they have some fluid. And when we drink something, and if any part of your dentin is exposed, like you brush your teeth away, some of the roots is exposed, we're talking about the dentin, that cold sensation is going to go right into it. And if you look, the nerves are surrounding these odontal blast cells, and that is why you feel the sensitivity of hot or cold or any kind of sensitivity to your teeth because it goes right into those tubules. This is why you want to make sure that you're not brushing your teeth so hard with a hard toothbrush or using abrasive um, substances like baking soda to brush your teeth because you're going to brush your gums away and then your teeth are going to become super sensitive. And so you want to be uh, make sure that you're not doing that. Now, if you have done that in the past, yes, there are things that you can use to seal off those dental tubules so that you're not feeling that sensitivity, okay? <clears throat> now, this is another picture of um, looking at the enamel versus the dentin. The dentin is yellowish in color. Why am I saying this? Mm -hmm. Why am I saying this? It's because a lot of people, they seem to believe that they need to brush their teeth really, really hard or, you know, with baking soda to make their teeth white but the thing is you're actually the the feeding the purpose if you're brushing your enamel enamel away with abrasive materials okay because what's going to eventually happen is that the dentin is going to start showing through the enamel your teeth are going to look yellowish in color all right i've had people who who have told me that they actually brush their teeth with ajax that's even worse it's abrasive and it's a chemical and it's poison for the body just because they want white teeth. And I'm like, you know, that's really not necessary. Okay, so you wanna be um, very careful with what you choose to brush your teeth. Look for those um, abrasive toothpaste and avoid them. Those are the ones with baking soda. Those are the ones with whitening um, ingredients. They tend to be a bit more abrasive for the teeth. Okay, let's go on to this next picture. Okay, here is um, a picture I really want you to see up close. This is a picture of the sulcus that I mentioned earlier. This area, when you go to the dentist and they are probing around in your mouth, what we are actually doing is checking to see how deep this sulcus is. This is so vital. Um, this is um, what we call the periodontal probe. It is... Um, calibrated or, or break, broken down into millimeters, okay? The periodontal probe is used routinely to examine the space between below the gum tissue alongside your tooth. 
this space is similar to the space between your fingernail and your finger. When your gum tissue becomes inflamed or diseased, dentist refers to this space as a pocket. So it can become very deep. These are called your periodontal ligaments. You have the cementum on the tooth and it attaches to the bone, okay? Periodontal probes have calibrations in millimeters to measure the changes that occurs during the progression of periodontal disease. When you see that word peri anywhere, when you see this word peri, just know that it means surrounding. It's a prefix that means surrounding. Like you would have like the periocardium. So it is the tissue that surrounds the heart. Here you have periodontal is everything that surrounds and supports the tooth itself. That's going to be your gums, your periodontal ligaments, and your bone. Okay, so um, they measure this to know the progression of the, the periodontal disease. The higher the number of millimeters below the gum, the more loss of attachment to the tooth has occurred, meaning that there is now bone loss. If this goes, all, it can go all the way up to 15, okay? And if it goes up to 15, it means that you have lost gum, you have lost bone rather, not the gums, because the gums could be up here and you may have a really deep pocket here. Now, what that means is that you would have food debris and bacteria all the way down here. And what the body is actually doing, remember what disease is. It is an effort of nature for your body to naturally free the system of a condition that is a result of the violation of the laws of health. Well, if a person is not cleaning their teeth properly, food debris, bacteria, and tartar will get into this pocket here. So what your body actually does is actually starts to break down the bone so that your body can actually get rid of the tooth itself because now the tooth becomes an irritant to the body because it has all that buildup on itself. It's almost like if, almost like if you have a... um a rock or a sand pebble in your shoe, you will naturally reach down and take your shoe off to get rid of that pebble. What your body is doing is naturally trying to extract the tooth on its own. So cleanliness is very, very important. <clears throat> okay, so... So now here we have um, diseases that affect the body often starts in the mouth. Now I'm going from... The, body, the tooth now to how disease in the mouth to how it can actually affect your body. Recall that there are anywhere from 300 to 500 different types of microorganisms that lives in the mouth. That's the oral flora. Now let us expose what these can actually, can how these can, can actually contribute to the health or disease of a person. Okay, diseases, um, here we have, um, where am I? In a healthy mouth, the oral floor is in a balanced state. Food is eaten, the oral hygiene is done on a regular basis. This person may or may not go to the dental professional on a regular basis, but usually they do, or they just simply get a checkup. And the mouth is happy and the body is healthy. This is this is what happened. Health, health is maintained if these things are taking place on a regular basis. But what happened if this is not the case? Well, when um, the mouth is not cleaned properly, you have what is called plaque that builds up in the on the mouth. Now, plaque is a sticky film of bacteria that constantly forms on the teeth. Whether you're brushing all day long or not, the moment you stop brushing is the moment they start to develop on the teeth. Okay, this is made up of bacteria which produces acid after you eat or drink. Now, the acid is actually their um, waste byproducts. They're called exotoxins. These acid actually destroys the enamel and causes cavities and gum disease. Biofilm is a complex and well-organized community of bacteria. Now it is plaque. And as the plaque builds up, it develops this what's called biofilm. It is formed by, by bacteria sticking together in like a, a form of community where they just continue to um, proliferate in this community of sticky plaque biofilm that's stuck on the tooth. 
And it just, you can find biofilm anywhere. And I'm going to show you a picture as to where it is. However, the most significant microorganism that causes major problems in the mouth is the streptococcus mutants, okay? And they are in this complex micro, I mean, biofilm. This is what plaque actually looks like. Okay. Um, and this is where you can see another form of biofilm. This is all bacteria sitting here. So if you see these things around like your pipes, your faucets, in your bathtub, or you know, on the walls, you want to make sure you keep this thing off, be clean it off because it's actually dangerous. Um set of bacteria now here on this probe you will actually see a buildup of plaque okay which is also biofilm and they're not just um they're not just bacterial slime layers but they're actually biological system that where the bacteria organize themselves and they are there to keep building on the teeth sometimes you would feel food debris on your teeth, like when you run your tongue, especially on your back teeth, you feel like that gritty, um, grainy type of feel, you know, your teeth is dirty. So you, it's good to just get your teeth brushed at that time. But if you leave that there, this biofilm and this plaque will actually keep building up to the point where it becomes hard. And this is what we call calculus or tartar. Once that's hard, you cannot brush it off. It would never come off with just a toothbrush. You actually have to go and get it cleaned professionally. And so most people, because they don't know that, you would see that it build up on their teeth. When people come in to see a dental hygienist, especially children, because it's a teaching opportunity, we actually use what's called disclosing agents, and it will actually turn um, the teeth. It will put like a pink dye on the teeth. It's not dangerous. And you can actually see where this person is brushing, that white area here. And you will see where they're missing, that you would know that they haven't brushed their teeth with at okay. least 24 hours, 12 hours. This is another oh, wow. uh, color. This is, the, this is another um, <clears throat> view of the plaque. This child obviously brushed their teeth, but they're not doing it as well because this is building up. Some bacterial plaque may be of um, greater re um, relevance in the development of cavity. And I just mentioned it. And those are your streptococcus mutant. So how does um, cavity actually develop? This is a picture of, um, of the cycle of developing of how a cavity will develop. You have the fermentable sugar. The sugar from what we're eating, okay, is not, the, it's pretty much not the acid that causes the disease, okay? The oral bacteria is exposed to the sugar. That is what they feed off of. The bacteria actually feeds off the sugar. Okay, and then when they feed off it, they release their own um, exotoxins, okay? And it says acid. They produce acid as a byproduct. That's their waste product. This, um, and so that is what actually starts damaging the teeth. However, our saliva is alkaline in nature. And so what that does, it actually starts to um, remove a lot of the sugar. But because of the amount of sugar that may be in the mouth and the proliferation of the bacteria, the saliva is not enough. We actually have to physically brush and rinse this, the, the sugar out of our mouth to stop the bacteria from doing its damage, okay? And then once that happens, the bacteria now, they die off, but they're, they're causing more bacteria to develop. And then um, it just keeps going on and on and on, unless we get into the habit of, of brushing and cleaning our teeth after meals. What I used to tell patients to do is, if you don't have a toothbrush in your toothpaste to brush your teeth off, rinse your mouth out with some water. Just get the sugar off your teeth so the bacteria is not... Um, developing too much or chew on a stick of gum for at least 20 minutes so that you can allow saliva to get into into a more consistent flow to get it off your off your teeth until you're able to brush 
but I do not suggest chewing gum because most people won't chew for 20 minutes. They'll chew for a long time and that keeps the stomach in constant activity and that is not good. Okay, so this is pretty much what it looks like um, in a child's mouth. Okay. This is a child with exposed pulp. If you remember the anatomy, this is the line where the nerves are. Can you imagine how much pain this child is in knowing that the sensitive part of their teeth are exposed? There's nothing this child can do. Now, I had a child that, um, that had this very condition and it took quite a lot of, I'm not gonna say aggressive, but I had to really, really try and get this child to get to the, to, the, to the surgeon so that they can actually fix this issue for them. These are your streptococcus mutants here. These are the bacteria that actually causes this disease. They're the most horrible ones for cavities, okay? Pain is not fun. And when you have a, a toothache, if anyone has ever had a toothache, you know from that one little structure in your body can cause headaches and it can really, really distract you from anything that you're trying to do. Imagine what's happened when is this is happening to a child and they do not have, um, what's the word? They don't know how to properly communicate that. So we, we as parents need to really take care of, of the little ones. Okay, I'm gonna move on to, to periodontal disease. Sister Camille? Yes. <clears throat> Would this represent a place where you could pause as we're approaching 10, we're um, at the hour and want to have time for a Q Okay, Q yes, we can definitely pause here. Are there any questions at all? Yes, I have a question. Sure. I was I, I was um listening to I'm sorry, a dentist on YouTube and he was talking about you were talking about the natural flora in the mouth. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that um there we should not be using any mouthwash because of our, we are killing the natural bacteria, and also there is a gum that we could chew to remineralize, remineralize mm -hmm. the teeth. Is that true? Okay. When he said we should not be using mouthwash, he's really talking about um, stuff like Listerine, and, and which usually has alcohol in it. You don't want to do that. The main thing that you want to do is just to remove the plaque off the teeth. The main thing that we, we want to remove this stuff off the teeth. Okay, because the body, the mouth already has a lot of bacteria in it that naturally belongs there, just like you have the gut flora. So that's the main thing. Now, as far as the gum, he's probably talking about gum that has xylitol, <clears throat> which is that's a sugar. Word. That's the word, the xylitol. I couldn't remember. Yes. The name. Yeah. yes, you have xylitol, sorbitol, and some other sugar alcohols that the bacteria um, cannot use, right? especially the streptococcus mutants. They cannot use the xylitol. But the main thing is it's not necessarily going out to get any kind of gum or, or mouthwash. It's really just to brush and floss your teeth to keep to keep the, um, the bacteria from becoming too much in the mouth that can, that's going to cause cavities. In a way, I would put it like this. When when the prescription for xylitol and all these things, I don't want I don't want you to take this the wrong way. It's almost like they're saying you don't have to bathe. You pretty much just have to use lotion, a certain lotion on your body, and that will be okay. Cleanliness is one of the health laws. So brushing and flossing is very, very important. You can just brush and floss and rinse with water and you're perfectly fine. Okay. Well, he didn't say not to brush and floss. He, he okay. stressed on brushing and flossing, but he also talked about that part too to keep the mouth flora in the same way or something to that effect. One other question I have, sorry, I don't mean to be eating. No, um, in regards to oil pulling, what's your take on that? To like the coconut oil pulling? Coconut castor oil. There is so much now, you have to be so careful. I have never, I've not seen any negative reports on it based on what I've read. I have done it before. Um, I would just encourage people to, I don't have anything against it. Let me just put it that way. And if it can help, because there are anti antibacterial properties in the oils, the, the type of oils that you choose. I know of the coconut one that is very antibacterial, and that's actually a good thing. So if, if you're doing it, keep doing it and, and just experience the benefit from it. But I'm not, I'm not against it at all. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
I thank you so much for the information. It was very good. I have a question. Uh, I put it in the chat about do we walk, uh, do we brush our teeth and floss and use mouthwash after every meal? And the mouthwash I'm referring to is not Listerine. I'm referring to, um, I was told to mix um, a little bit of peroxide in a uh, eight ounce glass of water to rinse the mouth out. Is that helpful? Okay, um, let, me, let me answer your first question. It is ideal to brush and floss after every meal. Okay. That is ideal. Now, I'm, I live in the real world just like everybody else. That is not, I, that doesn't happen all the time, realistically speaking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is why I mentioned, you know, rinsing your mouth out if you can or chewing on a stick of gum, <clears throat> sugar-free gum, actually, sugar-free gum after your meal, if that's what you have, but then you have to get rid of it within like the first 15 minutes of chewing because then you're going to keep your stomach in constant activity and that's not good. As far as... um. As far as the mouth rinse, there are natural things that you can use. You don't necessarily need a mouth rinse if you're brushing and flossing the plaque off your teeth. And I actually talk about the mouth rinse at the end of this that you can actually make for yourself at home. I actually do it myself. I hope you could hear me because I'm here. I, I could barely hear you because of um, someone's open mic, but I think I got what you said. You're going to present it at the end of your next session. Yes, the mouth okay. rinse. But okay. you can always look up natural mouth rinse on the on the computer and you will see simple things like you can put like water with like I can tell you right now that I'm gonna review it again, but like teach you in peppermint and some water. Be very, very light on the peppermint. I've actually done it before and even three drops is a lot. Okay, so I'll just tell you that right now. But you have to understand what you're actually doing with the um, with the actual essential oils that you're choosing to use. Okay, I will. I I have done the peppermint and the tea tree, and that really um, spark your mouth up. <laughs> Thank if you. Helps. You're welcome. So, <clears throat> so we have a question from Sipiwa from South Africa. Oh. Thank you so much. Finally, I've been raising my hand for quite a long time, but that's, that's Excuse, fine. I didn't uh, see, I didn't see hands. Sorry. Oh, okay. No problem. Uh, actually, it was just after you flicked your, your slides. So I wanted you to go back because I'm taking some notes, but then you were allowed to keep on. So I won't remember which slide it is. All right, let's leave it that at that because you also have the recording. Maybe I'll go back to that. Let me go back and, and then and, the and you... other thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I won't I won't remember it, 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 it was the earlier slides. So when I raised my hand and then uh, Sister Natasha said go on, yet you could have gone back and I take some few notes or I um, okay screenshot yeah but that's beside the point the point is about mercury because uh, some of the teeth now have the pockets because of uh, the, the mercury poisoning how do you restore your gums back to a uh, homeostasis when the pocket is wide open because each time when you brush your teeth blood will obviously come out I think my question is clear. Okay, so let me just go to this really quickly here. Um, the mercury poison does not cause the pockets. And that's what I really was trying to get to. <clears throat> let me just jump to this really quickly because it's very, very important. When you're talking about the pockets, okay, you're actually talking about this area here where there's color on the tooth. Let me give you a better picture. Um. This is what the pocket would look like. How do you restore that? Now, one of the things that I do have to tell you is that when you are looking at the pockets, okay, mercury, let me, let me just address this. Mercury poison is something that you're going to have to deal with from a blood perspective. You're going to have to get that blood cleaned up, okay? 
Now, the reason why that is so important is that when you have this calcified bacteria on the tooth, can you see my screen? Yes. No, I want the I want the lady who's asking me. I want to, can she see my screen? Hundred percent. I can see your screen. Hundred percent. Okay, perfect. So if you can see that this tartar here, this is all bacteria, okay? Once this bacteria gets onto the tooth and it's not removed, it actually causes ulcers along the gums that sits up against, that lays up against the tooth. Once that ulcers is there, that's where the bleeding is coming from, okay? Because when you go to brush, you actually rupture those ulcers even more and you see the blood coming out. What that means is that now you are introducing bacteria into the bloodstream. So in order to restore that to health, this has to be, this tartar has to be removed. Your toothbrush is never going to remove that. That has to be professionally done by a dental hygienist or a periodontal um, dentist, a doctor that specializes in the surrounding and supporting structures of the teeth. Unless you go and get this stuff cleaned off, this is going to constantly happen. It's going to be a back and forth negative game happening in your mouth. Now, when they do remove this from the tooth, I can't find my arrow. When they remove the tartar from the, from the tooth, even if it's a deep pocket, what the body does, this is how awesome God is. What the body actually does, it actually creates a secondary attachment even if there's no bone there to the tooth. And you are going to have to be diligent to maintain that with even more proper and um, consistent oral hygiene to maintain that secondary attachment. This is why I exist. This is why I'm a hygienist. Okay, did that answer your question? So for the mercury poison, that has to be, you have to start from cleaning up the blood and detoxing the body of that mercury. The other thing, as far as those pockets, if you are not seeing a dentist, I will highly recommend that you do and get that stuff removed from the tooth so that you can encourage that secondary attachment because the body just wants to heal itself. But you're going to need some help from a healthcare provider, especially in dentistry, to actually do that. You cannot do that on your own. Not that I know of, at least. Let me just, let me just make that very clear. Not that I know of. I don't know of anything that dissolves the tartar off the tooth. I don't know of any substance that actually does that safely. Okay. Did I answer your question? <clears throat> well, well, we're going to move on, Sister Camille. Thank you. We're going to take two more questions from Shauna and Dick Gapane. And then one question from the chat is, very quickly, what toothpaste do you recommend, Sister Camille? What toothpaste do you recommend? And then questions from Shauna. And... I'll, ask, I'll answer the toothpaste question really quick. I do not recommend any toothpaste. The reason you, you have to make that choice for yourself. If you use fluoride, you're going to make that decision on your own. Because one of the reasons why I don't recommend toothpaste is because I don't know what your body, how your body functions. And if I recommend a toothpaste and there's a substance in it that your body's allergic to, as a dental hygienist, I am liable. So you have to look for it. If you want toothpaste without, um, I can tell you what I use, but you can actually <clears throat> look for fluoride free toothpaste. If you're not a big fluoride person, I'm not big on the fluoride personally, but um, I don't necessarily recommend toothpaste because that's a chemical that um, if, if your body has an adverse reaction to it, then I'm, I'm liable. The other thing is that remember you are removing plaque. You don't need toothpaste to remove plaque. You just need a toothbrush and some water and then you can make your mouth rinse. It's just that simple. It's more simple than you think to keep the mouth clean. Is it wrong for me to say something now? Sorry, I don't mean the two things. Well, well let's, let's, let's move on to Shauna. Okay, and... so mm -hmm. I was saying no name to Thank you for this presentation. My question was, <laughs> did you say that our teeth are supposed to be yellow and that we shouldn't use baking soda to help naturally whiten it? Okay. 
I didn't say that a teacher be yellow. I wanted you to see that um that the dentin, this part, this structure of the tooth is yellowish in color. That is natural. The, the enamel is a little bit wider than the dentin. And so when you're using baking soda, it's almost like you're sandblasting your teeth, sandblasting the enamel. And when you do that, the dentin is going to naturally start to show through as the enamel is thinned out by that abrasive substance that is used to brush and clean the teeth. So I do not recommend ab abrasive items on the tooth because on the teeth because your teeth are going to naturally start looking yellow. People want to use baking soda because they want their teeth to be whiter. There's no such thing as a white tooth or white teeth. Your body. Your complexion actually plays a role in how white your teeth look. The darker a person is, it's the more whiter their teeth will look. But that's you have to you have to see it from that perspective. So I would not recommend using baking soda. Your dentin are naturally yellowish in color. If we're using baking soda or even charcoal, because it is abrasive on the teeth, you're going to brush away your enamel and you're going to cause your teeth to become more sensitive and the dentin is going to show through and show it as yellowish more yellow because you're going to show the dentin as you thin out the enamel. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, so, uh, Dick Gapane, feel free to unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, actually, I think uh, the presenter has uh, partly answered my question because my question would be, is it advisable to um, replace the, the toothpaste with a uh, a pink salt and, and charcoal, but you have answered uh, regarding a charcoal. And then the qu next question will be about the the, the gaps. I, I I read somewhere that the bentonite clay uh, has some restoration uh, effects on, on, on those uh, gaps uh, in that it helps the, the gum to, to grow again. How mm -hmm. true is that? Yes, I, I think I think I had three. Which 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 way was the third one? It's on the chart because I never thought I'd be able to get an opportunity to ask. Uh, okay, but it's fine anyway. Uh, okay, if you can answer those two, I, I missed my third one. Internet lay, uh, charcoal, and. Uh, Oh yes, the third one would be about the 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 oils, the uh, oil, oil pulling. Mm -hmm. uh, I I just need to understand if that oil pulling, since oil the oil contains the antibacteria, is it not destroying the the oral flora then? Because uh, according to my understanding, there are bacteria that we that is useful for, for, for that should be in the mouth. So if you use oil pulling and they have anti antibacteria are they not destroying that oral flora yes thank you okay the oil pulling is a natural thing and it's not going to remove all your oral flora your body's going to maintain that the only thing is that when you're using stuff like alcohol based type <clears throat> mouth rinses or anything like that you actually do more damage to the tissues in your mouth so the oil pulling is not dangerous it's not going to hurt you because it's a natural thing it will not, your body will replace that, the oral flora. Um, one thing I'm going to ask, because I know that I want to respect the time. I see a lot of questions here, like, um, so, um, do you suggest the removal of uh, metal fillings or have them or leave them? I want to address these. And so, Natasha, what I'm going to ask for you to do is if you can pull these questions here and just send them to me so that I can respond to them at the beginning of next week's um, presentation, that will be good. Excellent, thank you. That's okay. what I'm just typing in the chat. Yes. So you, if you um, have something. Because I see, hold on, I see stuff about Uncle Harry. I have my own testimony for Uncle Harry on my own teeth. And I really want to address these questions because <clears throat> Because that's where that's where the, the knowledge is going to take place so that we can know how to better take care of ourselves and, and help others, you know? So if we can just pull those questions and um, you can send them to me, however, and I can address them, I would definitely modify the 
the presentation so I can just get to the point of of answering you because I didn't even get, I got almost halfway, but I would definitely recap and make sure that you get the information that you need. And then I can answer the questions. Did you want me to take these last two hands by Dylan and um, Dylan and Olive? Well, how about if we just go to, um, just finish the other two questions from Dick uh, Gatpane and then um, the other two hands, we have to wait until next week. Um, to answer those because we're way past the time. Okay, <laughs> not a questions problem. keep coming in. Yes, so just write your question down. Please send them to Natasha. She'll send them to me and I'll make sure that I answer your questions. So I think um, um, Dick uh, Gapane, she had uh, uh, two other questions as well. She asked them, um, it was in a, in addition to the oral, the oil pulling. Um, yes, you know, I, was, I was responded to that them. That was responded to, but uh, okay. uh, regarding okay, the bench match clay and yeah. uh, using pink pink salt as an alternative to toothpaste. I would not recommend that. That is way too abrasive. It is is too abrasive with the pink salt, and I and I can address that once I um. I will, I, will, I will make a note of that in my mind and then answer that next next week. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you, Sister Camille. Thank you, everyone, for all these questions. It's such an important topic. And mm -hmm. um, thank you again for your presentation. And we will um, welcome everyone to return again next week at 9 a.m. Eastern time. But before we go, let's close up with a word of prayer. And Sister Natasha, can you pray for us? Okay. Got I it. Think, uh, Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Camille. Thank you, everyone uh, for coming today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, this opportunity to come together to learn about physiology to learn about the true cause of disease and to educate, educate, educate. Heavenly Father, um, on this Sabbath day, we thank you for this opportunity to rest in you. And thank you for using your woman servant for what she has garnered through her life experience on how to care for this part of the body. Um, we look forward to uh, returning next week to continue to learn. And we just thank you for the openness and receptiveness of the many questions. So we can just really put aside the misinformation or untruths that are in, in this field as in the rest of, of the health arena to find what you have said, which is your ways are simple and they'll confound the wise. Please be with each and every person here, be with their families that are represented. We lift up in a special way, Sister Sufi Fei and our husband as they are working on healing and recovering and trusting in you. These and all their mercies we pray for the forgiveness of our sin. This is our prayer that will be done. Amen. Amen. Thanks again, Sister Camille. <laughs>